I'm Admiral Masterson, Skid Masterson. I'm the President General of the Society. I want to welcome each and every one of you here with us tonight. In many ways, this will be a historic night for us because this is one of the early events sponsored by our newly created American Revolution Institute of the Society of the Cincinnati. Uh, the thing that makes it unique, you've been to Clark Lectures before, many or most of you, but for the first time ever, no matter where you are in our society, you'll be able to watch tonight's lecture. We'll be streaming it live. And um, those of you for whom we have email addresses got an email earlier in the last day or so that told you how to do it. But in any event, uh, we're very much looking forward to tonight's lecture and then to the uh, cocktails, which will be up in the Olmsted Gallery when we break, and, uh, and then a buffet supper, which we uh, we'll share down here in the, uh, in the uh, dining room afterwards. Uh, at this point, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our uh, super chairman of the History Committee, Scott Johnson, who will introduce tonight's speaker. Before I make my introduction, I've been asked to let everyone know in the new C-14, there's an article about the new history of the South Carolina Society, The Fabric of Liberty. Uh, it is available in the foyer uh, if you would like to purchase a copy. And in a commercial note, you don't even have to pay cash. You can sign your name and they'll mail you the invoice. So uh, that will be available outside. As chairman of the History Committee of the General Society of the Cincinnati, it is my great honor to present the 2012 George Rogers Clark Lecturer, Dr. Walter Bellingrath Edgar. Dr. Edgar is a native of Mobile, Alabama, an alumnus of Davidson College, and earned his PhD at the University of South Carolina. He's the author or editor of more than a dozen books on South Carolina and the American South, and of particular interest to us here this evening, Partisans and Redcoats, the Southern Campaign that Turned the Tide of the American Revolution. Earlier this year, Dr. Edgar retired from the University of South Carolina, where he was for 32 years the director of the Institute for Southern Studies. He is currently the Claude Henry Neffer Professor Emeritus of Southern Studies and Distinguished Press <laughs> Professor of History Emeritus. In 2001, he received the Distinguished Alumnus Award from the University of South Carolina, and in 2008, he was inducted into the South Carolina Hall of Fame. In 2006, he was admitted as an honorary member of the Society of the Cincinnati of the State of South Carolina and currently serves as its George Washington Distinguished Professor. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Edgar. Thank you very much, Mr. Johnson. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. The American Revolution is not only my academic uh, favorite area. It's also getting the word out. It's something of a hobby horse I'm going to ride. Now, in American history, especially the story of the American Revolution, has often been neglected in textbooks used in college classrooms for almost half a century. If you asked most Americans to discuss the Revolution, they would start with Lexington and Concord, fair enough, probably go to Bunker Hill, Saratoga, and then Yorktown, the end. <laughs> In general, not just textbooks, but history's 20th and 21st century historians, for the most part, consider the war in the South to be simply a sideshow. And somehow, it did all again end at Yorktown. The revolution that these writers present is not an American revolution. It's a New England Revolution with just a passing nod to the middle colonies and none to the South. <laughs> now, I know there's some excellent monographs and studies of the war in the South, but it is from general histories and from textbooks that most Americans get their history. And so for the last decade, one of my non-academic hobbies has been reviewing textbooks and see what they say about uh, the revolution. And it's not a very encouraging scene. 
There was one text which was published first in the 1980s and has been reissued ever since. It devotes five pages to the American Revolution. Three to social and political issues, two to the war itself. A more recent text, and by that I mean 2012, just four to the war itself that opens with this statement. The course of the war is soon told. If there ever were an understatement, that is it. <laughs> this same author dismisses, he literally dismisses the battles of Kings Mountain, Cowpens, and Guilford Courthouse as being neither decisive nor particularly important. And even when things are mentioned, there is an imbalance. It's roughly on an average in terms of the discussion when they do talk about the war, it's two to one for what happened north of the Mason-Dixon line to one what happened um, south. That's, pr that's, that's pretty typical. And then in today's textbooks, unfortunately, it's, it's focus in how they deal with the war. One new textbook has a German Baroness's account of, bird's eye account of Burgoyne's surrender at Saratoga. Her first person narrative from her diary gets more ink, as the press would say, than the entire Southern campaign. Or there's another text that devotes more space to a discussion of Mel Gibson's The Patriot than it does to Yorktown. <laughs> or even another where there is what they call side discussions on, and I quote, mercenaries in global perspective. More words, more text than the Southern campaign. And then there is the sad case of a book of readings on American history where the chapter on the American Revolution is entitled, Was the American Revolution Largely a Product of Market-Driven Consumer Forces? 